Greetings amateur radio operators. My name is Johnny and my call sign is K5ACL. Thanks for tuning in to Signal Search today. Today we're going to be covering a review and overview of the Retevis RT82, which is a DMR dual band handy talkie transceiver that also covers the analog FM mode. Now this covers the 2 meter and 70 centimeter hand bands and it has multiple power settings and a high capacity 2200 milliamp hour battery. Now DMR has taken off by explosion recently and there's repeaters popping up all over the country under the Brandmeister network, under the DMR mark network, and independent repeaters that might not have been connected to any network at all. So folks ask me all the time, do I recommend DMR? Absolutely. I think it's a really powerful network that interconnects a lot of hams together out there and it allows otherwise what would normally be quiet repeaters to be a really talkative system where folks can interact and get to know one another. Now we're going to hop to the bench here and check this radio out to cover the pros and cons of the radio. Introducing the RT82. Please visit their website at www.retevis.com for any specifications beyond what we might cover today. Once again, a big thank you to Retevis for providing this DMR handy talkie that we'll be reviewing and demoing today. Let's get started with the RT82. The first thing is the fit, finish, and ruggedness you'll notice. This isn't cheap plastic. It's well made and feels really durable. I really appreciate the plug retaining screw on the side. The screen is bright and I've found the screen to be quite readable in bright sunlight. I was initially concerned about battery life and the screen, but with the screen on the entire time and the radio just receiving, I received about 20 hours of battery life, which isn't too bad. The ergonomics of the HT are quite pleasant to use. I actually like using the trackball because it allows me to quickly switch between channels and bands without pushing a button for every navigation move on the HT. In my opinion, that would reduce wear and tear on the buttons. I was particularly interested in the radio's ability to handle strong interference and ensuring that it wasn't another HT that became desensed uh, whenever other radios were nearby. And in that regard, it performed great. There's so many advantages to DMR, like the removal of analog static and longer lasting batteries, uh, better audio quality, commercial grade equipment and repeaters, uh, the list goes on. <laughs> audio reports and audio quality are top notch, just what you'd come to expect from DMR quality. The speaker in this HT packs a punch. I've also paired it with the Retevis hand mic, which is just as durable and has a headphone port for privacy. I found other headsets from other manufacturers to work on the HT2. I'm a big headset person as you can tell. If you've ever tried using an HT in a noisy place like a ham fest or other construction site, it's just it's quite difficult uh, no matter what the audio power is on the on the speaker. Ground control card calling Sergeant Twist. Ground control calling Sergeant Twist. Come in. K5 ACL here. Hey Sam, you sound great. Uh, I'm really impressed with this this little DMR HT so far. How you doing, man? What you up to? K5 JM returning. Hey Johnny, yeah, you sound uh, good here. And uh, oh, just the usual stuff, uh, school stuff today. I mean, I'm not over the top busy where I can't take little breaks and stuff. But uh, actually, I'm I'm almost pretty much caught up. I kind of got behind last week, which was the problem. But uh, yeah, your HT sounds like it's doing good, and uh, I'm just on it. Yeah, I'm HT here in the house. I just have the uh, quarter wave whip on it, and I set it up here in my office, and I usually just listen to Talk Group 2. Okay, thanks for that QSO there, Sam. That was K5JM, one of my buddies here locally, not too far away from me and not too far from our DMR repeater. And thanks to the N508K for the wonderful DMR machine that we have located here in South Austin. Now, that was a presentation of the RT82. My only gripes on this radio are that programming a DMR radio is obviously a little bit more difficult than programming your typical analog FM radio, but it's not impossible. And if you're already familiar with the CPS software that's out there right now to program other DMR radios, then it should be a cinch for you. Uh, the lack of a squelch knob is, my, is another gripe. I like using squelch knobs, especially when I'm out in the field. Uh, you can turn the squelch all the way down and open it up by using a button, but the lack of a, a squelch knob would be kind of nice up by the volume knob. Uh, the price right now, I think the GPS model is going for like 239 
The non-GPS version is going for $229, so it's a little bit higher than most of the DMR radios that are out there right now. But still, I think the price is really competitive given that it's giving you uh, dual bands, two bands, two meters and 70 centimeters, and you're getting analog FM and the ability to do DMR. I also found the menus to be a little awkward and uh, to navigate, a little cumbersome, but again, once you get used to them, it becomes quite easy to become accustomed to it. I also found the battery indicator to not be very accurate. It would kind of jump up to halfway, and then after I'd stop using it for a bit, it would jump back down to one bar, and I found that it would stay on one bar for quite some time. So I'm not sure really if that's an issue with the firmware or, or the or the radio, or if that's more of an issue with like the battery memory. So it might not be a fault of the radio at all. I hope you enjoyed this presentation of the RT82 by Signal Search K5ACL. Stay tuned for a future video where we will cover how to program in a DMR repeater and some simplex frequencies into the radio, as well as upgrade the firmware on the radio. And I'll answer any questions you guys might have about it in the comments below. Thanks for tuning in to Signal Search today, 73.